Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 to 23. When they had departed, look, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod, that what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been deceived by the Magi, he became furious. He ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had ascertained from the Magi. Then was fulfilled what had been said through the Jeremiah the prophet. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, and she would not be consoled since they were no more. When Herod had died, look, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child, child's life are dead. He rose, took the child and his mother and went into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go back there. And because he had been warned in a dream, he departed for the region of Galilee. He went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. Let's talk a little bit about these dreams that Joseph's experience experiences and help him out. Anthropologists studying cross-cultural psychology define altered states of consciousness as conditions in which sensations, perceptions, cognition, and emotions are altered. Such states are characterized by changes in sensing, perceiving, thinking, and feeling. When a person is in such a state, the experience modifies the relation of the individual to the self, to his or her body, to his or her sense of identity, and to his or her relationship with the environment of time, space, or other people. Human beings wander in and out of different levels of consciousness or awareness many times a day. Sleep, waking consciousness, daydreaming, road trance, fantasy, and so on. Dreams take place in human consciousness, a rather complex dimension of the human person. While we have learned very much about human consciousness, there is much more that still eludes and puzzles researchers. Anthropologists who study and compare many cultures point out that the state of consciousness that we in the West consider ordinary or, quote, normal, unquote, is actually a construct, not a fixed fact of existence. Indeed, our ordinary, so-called, state of consciousness is, in many ways, quite arbitrary. In other words, human consciousness is capable of a wide horizon of potentials that each culture shapes into a fixed and stable state. This state of consciousness adapts the individual more or less successfully to survive in her or his culture's consensus reality. Here's ours. Long before we came into existence, we Americans doing this Bible study, or Western people doing this Bible study, our respective culture 
evolved into a consensus reality, an agreement on how to view and interpret the real. It is not a democratic enterprise on which each member votes or chooses to agree or disagree. We are already enculturated, some would say programmed, some would say conditioned, into our culture's consensus reality. But in the Bible, we encounter, whenever we read it, an ancient Middle Eastern culture's consensus reality, one vastly different from ours. In that culture, spirits, other than human persons densely populating the winds around us, are very much a normal part of consensus reality. That's why people say that angels don't appear now like they did back then. Yeah, you got it. Now, reality is... They do, but we just don't... There are other than human persons. But how this society in the Bible, Middle Eastern and Mediterranean, interpreted those persons as living non-human winds, breaths. And even some are so powerful and so great, they move the very sky vaults themselves. They are part of God's sky servants. They're the stars and constellations. Similarly, we think of love of money as something that binds someone. Jealousy is something that turns someone green. Yeah, our jealousy is different than the Bible's jealousy. Right. Yeah, and yeah. Our, our emotions are really something that we think is something that affects us. Yeah. Or from the outside world from that can be put into us or taken out of us. Right. That's in a lot of places, uh, but it's done differently. It's it's uh, our culture shaped around achievement, performative activism, and individualism. Mm -hmm. We perceive we're conditioned to perceive every human person as a cognitive and emotional universe separate from anybody else and even if you come from one of these cultures that used to be that it was collectivistic once you're here in the united states or the western world you start getting um you start getting conditioned very quickly you can't survive here otherwise right and we're so believing that we affect everything else, that we're in awe and disbelief on something like a hurricane or a... Some because we're in control. Happened. Right. Earthquake. But people who are devastated by them from collectivistic cultures nearby in the Caribbean can roll with those punches because they're close to death. So then you start asking, well, who's the more advanced culture? We're starting to wonder why we can't figure out a way to control those earthquakes. Exactly. So moving right along, in our Western culture, spirits are generally not encountered. They're not a part of our daily life, but they are in the Middle East, in the time of the Bible and now. One anthropologist, Vincent Crapanzano, has enumerated more than 35 different states of consciousness. Here are a few. are vivid sensory motor series of thoughts, images, memories, emotions, and sensations. Percepts like seeing, hearing, touching, but not smell. Curiously, not smell. With a narrative structure experienced during sleep. One of over 35 different states of consciousness. Daydreams are spontaneous, subjective experiences in a no-task, no-stimulus, no-response situation, including unintended thoughts that intrude inadvertently into the execution of intended mental tasks and undirected ideas in thought sampling during wakefulness. <laughs>
Nightmares are another alternate state of consciousness. An unpleasant dream that can cause a strong emotional response from the mind. Typically fear, but also despair, anxiety, and great sadness. They're a rapid eye movement dream that happens in the wee hours of the morning. Incubation dreams or lucid dreams is any dream during which the dreamer becomes aware that they are dreaming. During lucid dreaming, the dreamer may be able to exert some degree of control over the dream characters, the dream narrative, and the dream environment, and can even solve problems. Hallucinations are vivid, substantial perceptions in the absence of external stimulus that have the qualities of something located in external objective space. Dissociative identity disorder is a mental disorder on the dissociative spectrum characterized by the appearance of at least two distinct and relatively enduring identities, or dissociated personality states, that alternately show a person's behavior accompanied by memory impairment for important information not explained by ordinary forgetfulness. This is another alternate state of consciousness. What's moving? The white or the black? Illusions are distortions of the senses, or the senses being stressed to their limits, revealing how the brain normally <clears throat> organizes and interprets sensory stimulation. Visions are an experience of seeing someone or something in a dream or trance or as a supernatural apparition. They are another alternate state of consciousness. And they have powerful transformative uh, effects. <clears throat> These are just a few of the many levels of human awareness, human consciousness. Suffice to say that these, of course, are in addition to so-called normal or waking consciousness or pragmatic consciousness. In other words, our consensus reality. In trance or in any other altered state of consciousness, a visionary encounters, indeed enters, another level or aspect of reality registered psychologically in the brain in the same way normal, so-called normal, experiences are. Culturally normal or consensual reality, culturally normal experiences or consensual reality is that aspect or dimension of reality of which a person is most commonly aware most of the time. Alternate reality though Alternate reality describes that dimension of reality in which the deity and spirits reside, which human beings from culturally consensual reality can sometimes visit in ecstatic trance by taking a journey, variously called a sky journey or soul loss or out of body experience and the like, and to which people go on a one-way trip when they die. Those who do not believe any of these things would call this non-consensual reality. During the centuries before and after the Gospels were written, countless persons reported a range of visions and appearances involving celestial entities other than human persons or spirits from the sky vault. There is no reason not to take the experiences of these persons seriously at their word. 
their experiences have to be interpreted within the framework of their own culture's consensus reality rather than ours in the West.